Winston Peters, our Deputy Prime Minister, leader of New Zealand First, is kindly with us, just returning from Chogham, but many issues on the table. It's Tere. Thanks again for joining us on the programme, Winston. Kia ora. Kia ora, kia ora. And, um, well, we better start over in the States, if uh, if that's OK. I mean, you you know the dynamics over there. Even our anti-nuclear stance has been questioned too by an ex-Trump advisor earlier in the month. But things appear to be running pretty hot there with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Have you any preference here? I know you like to stay a little out of uh, offshore politics, but it does impact New Zealand's A, security and trade ambitions. So the outcome is still significant, uh, even though we're a long way from the States, Winston. There is no doubt that the outcome is very significant for New Zealand. And uh, in a few days' time, um, it'll be known. Uh, when you say, uh, do I have a preference? The answer is, I'm the foreign minister. I have a responsibility to ensure that we are neutral in these matters, don't interfere with other countries' politics. But uh, the outcome, in my view, is certain. And um, we'll see uh, whether we're right or wrong. Dinakwe, what do you uh, make of our anti-nuclear start? Still appropriate all these years later? Not this uh, time later, of course not. But if you go back to uh, when it happened in uh, circa 84, 85, uh, and look at the behaviour of New Zealand politicians and their manners or lack of it and how rude and arrogant they were, it had a terrible effect, not just this decision, but the way it was relayed on to the United States and the others. Uh, so that was a serious concern and always has been. Uh, we've had so many people brush over the, as, it's, as though it's of no matter. Look, you can agree to disagree, and friends can do that. But if you agree to disagree in terms where your uh, behavior is rude in the extreme, impolite in the extreme, uh, given our past relationship, then there's a cost of it. And I just say that because that happens to be a fact. And I was there at the time watching it. I think this cannot be the way we should be handling this. Uh, you know, we were a country at the time that had said that we didn't want to be nuclear. That's a fact. And that should be relayed on. It was. But the way it was passed on was terrible. Uh, can we, uh, well, obviously we've got uh, many things happening at the moment. Shane just got back from Singapore. Um, it seemed interesting when he was talking with their money people about infrastructure. They want food security. We've got land, but it needs water to grow the produce that perhaps the Singaporean community might value. Uh, what do you make of discussions of this type and about an infrastructural investment uh, and the trade-off being perhaps some improved food security for a nation like Singapore. Is it something that you favour as well, Winston? Well, yes, of course I favour it. That's why I'm pleased he's, of course, there, and also having the kind of conversations that we need to have to build this country's long-term economy, but also to make some wise decisions while we're doing it. And water is what we've got, and we've got the capacity to... And restore it, to store it and use it in a wise way all around New Zealand. But the real point is that there's countries like India and others who will be interested in this matter as well, as is Indonesia. And so it's a very, very sound um, basic conversation he's having, which should have been had a long, long time ago. We had it once, of course, with the UK before they went and joined the European Union. And look how well it went for us. We need to get back and uh, look at those great ideas again in a modern context. Did uh, I have a couple of ideas uh, to, to ask questions of you, but look, it's uh, it's your session, so have you got something you'd like to share with us? Oh, look, uh, first of all, I'm very proud of the level of success the Samoans had with the Chogham in uh, Samoa. It's a big ask for a small country like Samoa to put on one uh, meeting like that for, you know, uh, 56 countries from all around the continents of the world. And uh, I'm very proud of the New Zealand team that was there helping in every respect. It went extraordinarily well, and they are very grateful to us, and they made it very clear to us about that. I got a chance to see the place where the shipping disaster happened and to have a conversation right on that site uh, with the people who are the politicians in charge 
uh, the local mem- member, the, um, uh, the minister in charge of the, these matters, and also with the naval people doing the work in trying to recover the wreck, so to speak, and mitigate its damage. So all in all, it was a very, very successful chogum. And uh, next year, we, uh, uh, next two years, rather, we'll have to go somewhere else far, far, farther away. But just one more time, the New Zealand people were very, were reason to be very, very proud there. Tēnāku, uh, what commitments came from the back of it? Obviously, climate change was one of the major issues under discussion, uh, and we've guaranteed some support, some uh, environmentally or climate change-focused support well, went, for the wider we Pacific. Prepared. Yeah, we went there prepared because we were trying to work with other countries in putting together a mitigation fund, so to speak, and uh, we've got to a great start. We've got uh, Saudi Arabia in for 50 million. We've got uh, Australia in for 100. We're in uh, for 20. Other countries are putting money up substantially. And when Saudi Arabia puts up 50 million, that's a pretty big, you know, um, confidence investment assistance to us in, in this plan we have. So, yeah, it went great. I'm very saddened, though, that when we announced that the number of people that went bonkers about us doing it, so it was a waste of money and all that, you know, we're talking about dealing with issues, uh, whether you believe in climate change or not, but dealing with issues that are of, of grave concern to the island people and, and the blue continent, so to speak. And also, you had people there from, of course, Caribbean. Uh, we're, a, we're a big organisation, 56 countries, this huge, and there's seven others applying for the Commonwealth as well. So... Some of those spurious statements I saw from some people in their flippancy about our international obligations is though you can live in isolation. You can't. You've got to live in the, in the world and you've got to help out where we can in a responsible way. And it's also one of the reasons why we can increase our trade because we do have a record where other countries feel obliged to help us as well. It's that sort of narrow-mindedness that, frankly, I find quite uh, disgusting. You won't find it in many, in many radio arts here, listeners, but out there, there are some people whose meanness knows no bounds and their lack of comprehension of the totality of representation when you're a government and when you're a people like New Zealanders at the very end of the world, well, their lack of understanding knows no bounds. Tēnākwe, Monday was, uh, in fact, Te Pūtaki o Te Riri He Rā which was a, a chance to reflect back on the New Zealand wars and the lost lives there and also it uh, coincides with the signing of... Uh, um, the Declaration of United Chiefs of Aotearoa back in 1835. But it, you wouldn't really have known it. It wasn't uh, publicised, celebrated, acknowledged very much um, this year as it was in the year past. Uh, did you pause, reflect? Uh, what did you make of Monday's public holiday? Yes, it was Labour Day, but it was also um Te o Te Riri. Well, it's the coincidence of the event that, uh, you know, was not highlighted or emphasised by anyone before. It's a good point. It's a, uh, it's, it just happened to be the same day, right? Yeah. In yeah. this case, this year. That's right. It was on That's Monday. not always the same day. It was, um, it was all whacked in there on the same day, uh, on the 28th of October. Yes. Well, I don't understand why I didn't get the... Uh, the coverage that should have. It is a reason to reflect on it, but of course it's Labor Day, the triumph of the eight-hour uh, day on a 40-hour week. Um, so that's a huge, that was a huge victory. And the other matter, I uh, it's something for us to look forward to how we might consider it next year and the year after and pick up our accent, so to speak. Tēnākwe. Um The gang patches came back into focus this week with the um, tangi of a high-profile Mobster Winston down in uh, Wellies, I think they took him across to Porirua. Uh, and again, you're reminded that these blokes have been disenfranchised from mainstream society for a long time. And the uh, the patches are much beloved, and even though communities might uh, feel intimidated by them, I just wonder that, that even with a change in legislation, whether in fact those gang patches will come off, um, what are you making of uh, people still sporting them? Uh, and Mark Mitchell's heavy-handed approaches to that, bearing in mind the legislation to come. 
Well, look, who are the greatest victims of gangs in this country? Well, they're Maori people, and, and, and massively, in many cases, innocent Maori people. So why would we be defending them the right to wear a gang patch? The second thing about it is, you said they've been disenfranchised. No, they haven't. They can vote like everybody else if they try to step up and be responsible in society. But no, they're engaged in serious crime, serious drug movements. It's destructive of our people and there's no good in it at all. And it's a very uh, sad circumstance. I've seen reform GAB members who are standout members of our community. There was one in Kaita who did a marvellous job for a long, long time. And then there was one who was also the head of the uh, East Tamaki Rugby Club many, many years ago. And his uh, level of responsibility and leadership was just incredible. He's a reformed gang member. Because there's no good in this. And when you see what them in a portiki thinking they can intimidate this township of portiki, then something's got to happen to turn them around and stop them in their tracks and put them back to work like the rest of us. The rest of us have to work. Why shouldn't they? Dan Quinn, thanks for sharing some time with us each Thursday. I appreciate it. And uh, our listeners do as well. Ngamahi uh, Winston. Until next Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.